Alrighty guys, welcome to another YouTube video here. Today we are going to do a little guide on how you can play your Assassination Rogue. There's a lot of different builds and most of them work eh, somewhat evenly. Today here we are not going to talk about the Frost build. We are going to talk about the build using the Unholy Gems, using the Doomblade Legendary. In this build here I'll cover the talents, I'll cover the playstyle, I'll cover everything you need to know without the video getting too long. So kick back, relax, and enjoy guys, as we take you in for a little tutorial on how you can stabby step your enemies. Sylvanas, maybe even. But before we get too much into it here guys, don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and found it helpful. Leave a comment what you thought of it or what you want to see next. Subscribe to the channel. I know most of you guys aren't subscribed and it helps out a lot. Check out the live stream on Twitch TV, links to that and much more below. And check out our partner, Esports Nutrition. They created the ELX, or Ginger Juice, and I just check those out. All right, guys, here in this video here, we're going to cover your talents, conduits, soul binds for the Venfier Covenant as assassination rogues. We are going to cover what gear you want to use, and what stats and considerations in terms of Trinkets you want to go for, and the legendary is going to be your bloodstained Doomblade Shroud thing. Doomblade legendary. So I'm not going to talk about that. Put it on the cloak. Now you know. We're going to talk about opener and rotation in general, playstyle, and things you want to like keep an eye on. And then we're going to close off with some pro tips and tricks as well. All right, here, guys, I'm going to go over the talents that I use personally and what I feel is a good choice and some options that you can use using this build here. Right. So let's go into the talents. We are in assassination spec. So for the cookie cutter, what you usually want to play build is this here. It's elaborate planning. Up, good up time, multiple target damage bonuses really outweighs master poison a lot master poison is usually only meant for pvp and uh, master assassin you really want to pick master assassin over the other two the other two doesn't make a whole lot more sense master assassin is great for like on demand bursts and a quick start of combo points vigor more energy region and makes your spec flow a lot easier and helps out a lot of keeping elaborate planning up uh, elusiveness cheat death and leeching poison pick whatever you want mainly for rage you want to go cheat death eternal bleeding these here doesn't really matter i feel like eternal bleeding is a good choice it gives you a lot of extra dps on stunnable targets if it's a stunnable target that can be is where you are certain of everyone swapping to prey on the weak is a really great choice as well you want to play electricity uh, Venom Rush and Exsanguinate doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, Exsanguinate takes a lot of haste to use, so we're not going to pick that. We're going to take Electricity. And Poison Bomb. Uh, for rates, Poison Bomb. These here are Mythic Plus or PvP specific. Some cases, if you have a lot, a lot of haste, you want to pick uh, Crimson Tempest or PV for rate, but this is not the case yet. Two of the options you have is going to be Blindsight and Deeper Stratagem. So you, instead of going elaborate planning Vigor, you go Blindsight, Deeper Stratagem. This is a bit better. Pure single target. As soon as there's two things you can hit, elaborate planning and Vigor is going to be more value. I feel, personally, I feel like Blindsight and Deeper Stratagem is a lot more fun to play. It gives us some extra buttons to press and generally just flows really well. But damage-wise, it is not better as long as there's just one or more than one target. So, this is the talents and what you want to use for the talents. Let's go and take a look at the Soulbind. So, I use Nadia, which is also the one you're going to be picking for assassination single target. We're going to take Frillseeker. We're going to go into the offensive conduit and we are going to pick Lashing Scars. Because it's a free offensive conduit and there's none of these that really have something to do with DPS increase. We're going to take Agent of Shadows. We're going to take Quick Decisions. Quick Decisions is 
utility and its move range and shadow step and lower cooldown. Personally, this can get you out of a lot of situations and grind you a bit more uptime and to a slight increase of DPS. Recuperator. I like to take Recuperator as tiny. It's more free self-healing and it's more of it. Pretty good. We do not want to go over for this conduit slot here because we will be missing Dauntless Duelist. Dauntless Duelist is a flat 3% increase of damage single target. Therefore, Dauntless Duelist is amazingly good. What we are then going to take is we're going to take Well Placed Steel for extra burst. This here makes the whenever you press your Toxic Blade even more significant and even more bursty. Really good Conrad. Definitely worth taking. And then I've chosen to, You can choose both of these here. Either are good. Personally, uh, like this one here with a extra absorb shield can really get you out of some good situations. Personally, I like to... I've been doing a lot of locks and like trying to pump my damage a bit. Re reducing the cost of faint is really good when you want to do more damage as it gives you less energy you have to spend on fate if you need to soak something or survive. The slight DPS increase, more survivability here. If you take this one, you could also swap this one out for Recuperator and not take Recuperator. All choices, like the one, the, you want to pick this route here down, and then the choices that isn't potency conduits are pretty much optional. You can choose whatever you want. It's not going to affect your damage a whole lot. It's more your playstyle and what you like to do. Alrighty, guys. Here, so for the gear for your assassination rogue, we are gonna be building a little bit simple. Actually, we are gonna have crit haste. They are our primary stats, and you want to have pretty much just as much as you can get your hands on. However, unlike sub rogues with haste, like versa and mastery, your all the stats aren't that bad. So there's still a lot of value. So I'd say 8 out of 10 times your the higher item level piece will be the better one, especially if it has either haste or crit. Most mastery items are not that great, but if you have a lot of crit haste items, a verse mastery item isn't going to be that big of a deal because you want some of it. You don't want to go completely zero on versa and mastery since there's still great stats for assassination. You just want to prioritize crit and haste. So that is how you build your stats. We have our legendary here, Bloodstained Shroud. And just to sum up what it does, it gives mutilate 45% bleed damage over 8 seconds. So it'll do 45% more damage as a bleed effect of mutilate. And Venom does 5% increased damage per bleed you have in the tide. So it's one extra bleed and then you have your Rapture and you have your Garrot. And if you're playing the Shuriken or Crimson Tempest, you'll do more damage with this. However, it's not worth it might want to uh, keep in mind this if you are watching this in the future so for trinkets i'm running the two best trinkets however they aren't as a high item level as i want them to be file of purification is really good and salvage fusion amplifier is also really good other trinkets you want to keep in mind that are also really really nice for assassination rogues are the other plagueful trinkets the one is also a little add the Shadow Grasp Totem is a good unused trinket. And the Inscrutable Quantum Device is also a great unused trinket. However, these two here are the best by quite a margin. It's not incredibly... It's like, so if you have them, it's completely useless to use other things. But like a 242 Quantum Device quite equals out to a 239 Salvage Fusion Amplifier. This one here is just amazingly good for assassination rogues due to us having a quick weapons and we have a lot of haste. So that is why this one here is really good. For enchants, sim it out what you want to use, but you want to use edgy as much as you can. Some primary stats and chest. And we have boots. We have 15 agility. I use crit and haste, one of each. That's what seemed the best for me. And we have Celestial Guidance on main hand and Sinful Revelation on off hand. Doesn't really matter. You can swap those around. It's maybe five sim DPS to swap them, swap them around, which is well within margin of error, especially 
when you consider the fact that you're a person playing it, not a machine calculating. So don't be too fast about that. Don't go and enchant your other weapons. What is important, though, is that you have a higher item level weapon in your main hand. But honestly, I wouldn't spend the gold on two new weapon enchants because you're like, oh, shit, I did the wrong ones. Don't bother. It's not going to give you higher looks. Unless you're going for a rank one looks. But then you already knew this. Alrighty guys, yeah, so let me just show you the opener and how I do it. I know there's a lot of different ways to do it, and they might be slightly better. I just feel like this way here is pretty good, and it's got me some really good results. So, uh, first things first, we gotta remember to uh, put a poison on, otherwise this here isn't gonna make sense. I did like one opener here without poison, and that didn't make a whole lot of sense. But as you can see here, uh, my spells are going to be shown up here. I'm going to go over it here first, and then we'll, I'll show you guys. We're going to start in Stealth. We're going to Ambush, Mutilate, Rupture. Then go Road for one combo point, and then we're going to Slice and Dice. Guaranteed one combo point, Slice and Dice, and that is because we have Cut to the Chase now, which adds duration to Slice and Dice when we're in Venom. So we don't want to waste more than one on Slice and Dice, because it's pointless, and it's waste of combo points. That's something we don't want to do. So what we are going to do here is that we ambush. Da, 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 da. Yes, I explained that. And then we are going to fill up our combo points up to five or six or four, five or six, depending on what talents you're using. Always like one below or one higher or one full or one below. That is what I wanted to say here is what you want of combo points before you press a finisher. You're, the reason is you don't want to mutilate for one combo point that's stupid and doesn't make a whole lot of sense so that's the way we do it we don't want to overcap combo points so we're gonna when we do our burst here what we're going to do is that we're gonna press vendetta shiv flagellation and trigger vanish and our venom the reason we do it in this order here and we do flagellation right before we go in is because we hit the flagellation then we have like as long as duration to stack that flagellation up as possible before we continue with our burst so and which means we are getting higher stacks and more out of the flagellation that is why we place flat before shiv i feel shiv usually gets to the point where we use shiv and then we're like ah no nah, we're still quite far away from getting the last hit in anyway so uh I'm on that later. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to ambush, mutilate, get rupture, get roads, slice and dice, mutilate, mutilate, and we do our burst here. This is where you want to use your potion as well. You don't have to use a pre-pull. And then we just continue here spamming. We're going to keep up our, our dots, of course. I don't know why that missed. So yeah, when you're watching these here, that's one mutilate, that's one mutilate, that's one in Venom. And just to show you here, pressing Rupture adds four. I don't know why the add-on does that, but that's how it does. I'll try to remove them in various ways. Doesn't work. So one thing here as well, when you're playing, yeah, I'll just mention this, I'll mention it again because it's really important. You want to make sure you're not super low in energy and you have some combo points before pressing shiv so when you press shiv you want to be at least at four combo points with including the shiv you can shiv at five if it means that you're gonna get a good shift so we're gonna have one two and if we didn't miss that one we could have gotten three in and if we had some point please up but that's like see you there's a difference between getting one or two in venoms or three or four in venoms in a shiv since it's a massive amount of extra damage to that so for the playstyle itself you want to maintain slice and dice with that being said that's really easy done if it drops due to mechanics or whatever just refresh it with one combo point if you can or as little as possible that's your one, number one priority 
like if you can finish then you want to use a finisher the order of your finisher goes as follows maintain slice and dice maintain rupture press and venom that's the order of your finishers that's the way you want to press them you want to use your shift on cooldown you want to make sure you hold that for your burst so you don't want to go into your burst or hold your burst for a shift then you want to hold the shift for the burst if you understand what i mean so don't press shift if your burst is coming up and your shift isn't going to be off cooldown before you're going to burst want to have that for your burst so you can get like some dice out you know what a is that's a lot of damage that's right and i'm going to find a boat to swan half now because that's apparently what you do when you say that's a lot of damage so when we've done our finishes we have that all of that in place what we are going to keep in mind here is now the use of builders so we have we have a builder spender rotation so the use of builders here i mentioned that before they also have an order if we have blindside talent we're going to use blindsight uh, as the top priority just press you do not want to press mutilate whenever you have a blindside proc because you can lose that blindside proc if mutilate procs another one that's a proc wasted and that's really bad make sure you use it and then we mutilate for the rest of it however Garot also have a builder it gives you one combo point remember that so if you are at four combo points where you normally would finish but if you're at four combo points you have your garo ready to stab and you are not gonna overlap your garo so like garo goes off cooldown but you don't want to press it until it's within the pandemic window there's a lot of weegars to track this i have my weegar here you can ask for it in the if not ask for it in the um comments below i'll uh, i'll put it down there as well also you might find it on my discord channel we are putting vigors and add-ons uh separate place over there that's gonna be real nice that being said you don't want to refresh the arrows you dodge outside of the pandemic window you can refresh them inside so like when there's a third or less of the duration of your bleed left then you can refresh your bleeds or dodge without them losing duration so what that means is it's going to take the add the duration the full duration of your dot that you are applying and add it into the dot that's already there so you get an even longer dot which is really smart it has some really cool mechanics and it makes us though we can optimize really well without having to be like and uh, now put the dots it's really cool cool feature uh was that was implemented in walls of drain or many moons ago when the game was still not as terrible as it is now hopefully blizzard will fix this here in a later video so make sure you stay subscribed for updates on patch 9.15 i'm gonna make a little video here that compiles all the good things about that soon so all these things here being said this is pretty much how you play your rogue there's a few things you want to keep in mind here when you're going into multi-targets so you have like multiple targets to keep the bleeds up uh, you don't want to keep your bleeds up so much that you're just bleeding up right before they die if especially on uh, the nine where you have two targets that are just there you can bleed up and bleed up and then do the burst so all these things here vary a lot more but i'm gonna go more into detail about this in all the videos thank you very much for watching guys and i'm sure my friend killer chris have a few words to say before he leave you to it and that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching the video here. Before you go, don't forget to check out one of these videos over here. Or check out the links below the stream. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you'll leave a like. And subscribe to the channel for more good content. I'll see you in the next one. Or on the live stream. Peace. Tag us up.